Work on Satan's wood box continues in my bathtub, oddly enough. I couldn't think of a better place to sand. I'm making a real mess in my bathroom. But uh, first I filled the dog bones with this stuff, wood epoxy. It's two-part epoxy paste. You mix it. It's like putty. You mix it in your hand with gloves on and you kind of knead it. And um, then I uh, applied it to the box with a uh, with a putty knife. The goal was just to fill the little dog bones. But it was really hard to fill the dog bones without leaving excess material all over the place. And the excess material is uh, taking a lot of time to sand off. I've just got this thick layer of dust everywhere now in the bathroom too. But um, So I've used this sanding block and um, also a hard rubber sanding block. I'm about three hours into sanding and um, for the fine sanding I'll use my sander but for this I'm having to do it by hand. So you can see there there's some excess and if I wanted to get rid of that that would require about 20 minutes maybe 10 minutes of sanding. Anyhow it's turning out okay though. No complaints other than the unwanted exercise. So I hope to varnish it tomorrow. It is May 14th, 2020 still. I was sanding earlier. I've just come from the shipping place and I've got a couple things to unbox. The first I already opened is a package from Send Cut Send. This is these are the plates for the draw latches that go on the box. They are brushed stainless steel. I think they're 16 gauge, I can't remember. And this cost me about 28 bucks. I uploaded a DXF and gave them my credit card and they sent me these parts. Good deal. Over here, we have a kind of weird looking box from the foam cutting vendor. So there's no hope of opening that box with one hand, so I'm going to put the camera down and open the box. Whoever packaged that has a bright future as a Russian doll maker. So let's see if we can see anything. I don't know if we're looking at scrap or what. No, these are actual these are actual parts here. Cuts look good and clean. I wish I didn't have to use laminated foam though. That's one inch, but it's two half inches laminated together. I found another vendor that has a, a deeper and broader inventory and I may have the one inch parts recut there. So this is a top support or pad or whatever you want to call it. So I'm a little troubled by the fact that the part numbers were not cut. That's going to it's going to make assembling the whole project much more challenging. Whoops, I'm going to have to put the camera down again. Okay, now we're into the meat of it. And I guess I misspoke. I, there was one drawing that didn't have part numbers on the parts. They have indeed cut the part numbers. So this is not cool. This quarter inch foam. It's op open cell on one side. This is not quarter inch foam. This was this is foam that's been I can't remember the word skivved or something like that. It's been cut with a hot wire I think and made into quarter inch foam. Yeah there's some striations there that are consistent with that theory. So I think I'll probably have these recut by the 
other vendor that sort of popped up after the fact. The cuts are clean. All my issues relate to the material. I like the little numbers. So that looks good. All right, now here, here's some interesting parts. These are the parts that are. I don't know why those are messed up. Anyhow, these have the contour of the camera in them. I don't think I'll try to assemble this big puzzle until I've got the box varnished. Here's some more interesting pieces. So I guess it is acceptable. We'll see what happens once I varnish the box. All right, I'm outside now. See this red thing? It's called a power sander. I have no idea why I didn't use it earlier. Basically, I wasted all the time that I hand sanded. But anyhow, I have this sanded to my satisfaction. I wasn't able to remove all of the stray epoxy. If I had persisted, I think I would have um, removed the epoxy, but too much surrounding wood would have gone with it. So I stopped. Next step is varnishing this baby tomorrow. Okay, so I have um, waded through all the foam pieces here and put them in the box. And there's a bit of a problem, which I alluded to earlier. The variance in the foam thickness is a huge problem. You can see that that one there is pretty thick, but then down, you get down here, it's really skinny. And so I have not enough thickness here. The cavity for the magazine is not wide enough because these are not a quarter inch thick. So it's not the end of the world. I've, I did have a few extras and so I'm just gonna have to hand cut them. Again, no big deal. Um, and uh, I mean, it fits like a glove, I guess. Uh, somebody else's glove though. I need to um, add I think about three quarter inch sheets to make this work. Other than that I'm reasonably happy with it. A few a few of the uh, dimensions didn't work. Oh well that's my hand cut sheet so it's a little lower. I can fix that by moving it up about moving it over about three. But so this is a profile here for an ultra 16 lens. And then it can accommodate a longer lens out to here. Um, normally this pocket will be filled in with three blocks of foam. But uh, if you need, if I need to carry a longer lens, I can just remove them. And that opens up a bunch of space. So overall I'd say this turned out pretty well. If the cutter just um, did a better job with the uh, uniformity of thickness. It would have turned out perfectly. So those go in last. And then these go on the lid. They go on the lid and they hold. Oh, unanticipated problem. No, there's no unanticipated problem. Oh, well, it's just not lined up correctly because I haven't really assembled it correctly here. I need to move it left or right to get it where it belongs. And um, then once I do that, this will be in the lid and it'll hold the magazine down and in place. 
So it looks like I'm about three quarters of an inch off. Anyhow, so not it's not an unqualified success. It's sort of successful. This is getting messy. I had to hand cut several layers here. And now the camera does fit like a glove. The only problem is that these plies here tend to kind of fall inward when the camera's out. And so I need to need to um, laminate all of these layers. I'll just use a 3M Super 77 spray adhesive to do that. And uh, every, uh, every piece of foam is equipped with a well, with three handy regist registration holes. So when I want to glue it, I just need to have three dowel rods handy. This was very time consuming. Well, I can't put that in with the camera in the box, but um, so I think I think I've got it uh, usable. The only thing is that I trimmed so much out that there's a frustrating amount of play. The trade-off is you can have no play but you can't get the camera in the box or you can have some play and be able to get the camera in the box. It's not the end of the world though because we've got these which will be on the lid and they will um, they will prevent side-to-side -side motion also, there are these. They go on the lid and they press on the handle here. In fact, I'll probably trim them, trim them back a little bit, trim a little notch into them. So, I think this, uh, this isn't quite what I wanted, but it's definitely going to do the job. Here's a quick look at the contours. I wish there was some way to carve this out of a solid block of foam. All of these layers are a pain in the butt. And here it is with the camera in it. These guys. Fill in the lens cavity. There's three of them. Alright, so now I just need to finish the box. I mean varnish it, finish it. Attach the hardware, glue the layers, and I'll be ready to go.